Hello, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, share this new WordWorks video with you. Um, the, it, come, it came about because I was visiting um, the Nueva School recently just as a visitor, and um, I happened to catch Carol Lee, um, the preschool teacher there. She had no idea I was coming, but I just wondered if she would show me what's going on, and what she showed was so wonderful that I just grabbed my camera and, and walked around as she described what they've been doing, and, and uh, I just knew I had to share it. So what you're going to see here is uh, we see a brief bit of looking at the examples of the kids exploring phone and graphing correspondences. You can see here that they've been using um, kids' names as a jumping off point for that. Um, a key, the key part of the film really revolves around looking at word families and this word bag activity that she uh, carefully builds on from Lynn Anderson's work. And um, at the end of the film, I point more to Lynn's work and how you can learn more about that activity and see how Carol Lee has been expanding on it for in her own context. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out here before we, you'll see the, an image of this uh, word web later, and Carol Lee describes how the kids got a kick out of, they once they saw the word bank, they wanted to make their own games and play with their, each other. And one of the things they liked the most was getting what they called tricky words which really means foils of words that don't really belong, but somebody might think. And so my guess on this one is that pool and fruit were there planted by the kids to confuse each other. Um, and the other thing that is really central in this video is how well and how free, um, Carly draws on what's going on in the class. All of the words are picked for reasons that are interesting to the kids. And in particular, she then take by taking the word family, she uses that as a means to make sense of graphing phony correspondences. So my hope is that when you watch this film, you'll see how in no way is working with word morphological word families a hindrance to to under, to looking at graphing phony correspondence. In fact, by putting it in a meaningful context in which they live, I think it actually makes a brilliant sense of it. So let's let uh, Carol Lee show us what she's doing. Emergent phoneme lessons. Right, right. Okay, so a new thing that happened for the first time this year in pre-K was uh, the development after, you know, some word bag experiences, um, which students really enjoyed, of them wanting to develop their own word bags. This is a screenshot taken from Lynn Anderson's uh, website, Beyond the Word, where you can get an image of the kind of uh, word bag experience Carly's talking about. And right. coming in that, yeah. with an envelope full of words and then wanting to run a session with their peers uh, on word family. And there were, um, and then of course the, it was, I think part of the fun aspect of it was that you could have tricky words in there. Uh, of course, the ones that are not in the family. And so some some very, these are more developed. These are like more recent efforts, which already show um, a, a whole lot of mm -hmm. development that's mm -hmm. taken place around compound words and their understanding. Of, we began to do prefixes and suffixes. What? Yeah. The uh, collect our prefixes and suffixes, but let me see if I can find an, an earlier. An, or, yeah, these are early versions where parents uh. wrote some of the words that their children said, and nice. And then they and then they um, utilized the structure we provided around the idea of a word bag. And would you have done this one on heel first? As a as a model, or no, we did the very simple bases that are kind of traditional, yeah. like play. Yeah. Um, but heel came because one of our children got their tonsils out, and so uh -huh. um, we hoped that he would heal well. Perfect. And so then this came, and Rebecca did this with them, and she introduced. Um, this very powerful notion that yeah. yeah it can be in the family even though it doesn't sound the same exactly. I want to pause here to highlight the importance of this context of, of the children's learning. Notice how 
everything we've seen so far, including the phonological uh, investigation of how to write the phoneme f at the beginning that we could just got a glimpse of, but also the uh, words suggested from parents that for investigative compounds, and now this investigation of the family of the word heal, which includes the word health, that arose because of a child having been sick in the class. So the, the, the class is focused on these ideas, and these are words in the kids' vocabulary. They know heal and health. And now, um, Care Lee's students are getting introduced to this, what people think is really advanced idea of the morphophonemic principle, that the pronunciation of these related words can change, but now they're seeing how the, the meaning connection is marked by the spelling, and now you're about to get into digraphs. So you see how the phonology and the morphology are taught together and in a meaningful context, which just adds interest for the students. Take a look. Yeah. The vowel digraph. Yeah, so yeah. Um, <laughs> that was the big reveal in, in that. <laughs> the in big that reveal. One. That's great. <laughs> um, and also the idea of, you know, they, they're really interested in homophones now. So that came through that lesson um, as well. So we've had some very... Uh, the old love? Yeah, the, yeah, you know, classic ones as well as... Yeah, um, lovey. That's great. Yes. Oh, the two loveys. Right. I <laughs> how many, and how many... Right. How many ways can you express that phoneme? Yeah. Again, I want to highlight how we see that there is no lack of explicit attention to graphene phonic correspondences here. In fact, the attention is greater, I would argue, because it's in the context of what kids are noticing when they dive into words. So here, they've thought of two words, lovey, um, and they thought of two ways to write, and that's sent them on a little launching pad for ways to write the phoneme E. Um, we're going to see that we also saw with the EA digraph that there was more th that it could write both the, the E of heal and the E of health. And what makes this important is, or interesting to the kids is because they're noticing it in words that they know. They know heal and health. They've been talking about it. They see that the pronunciation change. They can attend to that pronunciation change, and they can see a concrete representation of the EA that's writing both of those pronunciations. So they notice things, and, the, and because Care Lee is, um, has been working with her own orthographic understanding for so long, she's able to harness these things. Now, you might wonder, what's this going on with lovey? Um, well, we, we can talk about lovey. There's actually a diminutive suffix here, and there could be E-Y and I-E. Both could work. And, but that's not the point. The point is the kids think about these words. And, they, and now the other thing you're going to see is how they come up with these words like re-love. And, and in a second, you're going to see that I actually misspeak uh, when I'm talking to Care Lee and I say that, talk about the word re-love as if it was in the rain video when it actually was the word rainer in the, in the rain video and the word re-love was in this love uh, web. But the point is, this is the way that kids get to play with the real structures of words. And Care Lee does a wonderful job of supporting that play as a way to teach structure. So let's go back to Care Lee and see what she has to show us. And I love, um, I love and in that rain video too, it happens where, you know, we're like, re love. Like, oh, yeah. Somebody must have said it, but that, why not? Yeah. There's <laughs> always a definition once they get that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so let me show you a more advanced version here. Well, here I have to apologize because I don't have the video for what the more advanced work that their kids were doing, and I'd love to see what that was. But I am going to, after I close out here, I'm going to point you to places where you can find this rain video I was talking about and uh, Lynn Anderson's website where you can look, study this idea of a word bag and so much more. Um, but what I want to really highlight here is how Kara Lee's own orthographic knowledge through study over years, this is not her first year doing this work, um, she just is able to take whatever the kids are interested in and use that as a launching pad for the word families that she studies. And in the context of a word family, you get to notice these things. You, they, the kids know that heal and health are related in meaning. And when they see how it's written, whether or not they can read yet or not, they can see that there's an EA in both heal and health. And they can now focus on the pronunciation shift and see that the spelling is 
marking that meaning connection. And that is a rich way to look at phone and graphing correspondences. And then etymological concepts like the, the homophone principle, once they see the word heel, as you, as you saw, Carol Lee says, oh, the, this was a launching pad for their look at homophones. Now, homophones are super rich, and they highlight the fact that just because two words sound the same doesn't mean they're connected, and that's why the spelling is typically different. So anyways, I, I hope that you're, you, you see that this is just a launching pad for, for investigating morphology, phonology, etymology in a preschool class, and that this is obviously a joyous uh, way to, for the kids and the teachers to learn. And with that, I'll leave you with, discover, with um, to go on your own investigations, make your own discoveries, and take advantage of the many resources out there for you. Cheers. Next, I referred to this rain video, which you can see a screenshot of here from a Carolee's class from some time ago. Uh, to find it, just go to the NuevaSchool.org webpage, and under the Academics tab, you can see Structured Word Inquiry. And if you click on that link, it's going to take you to a page here that has lots of videos and other resources about Structured Word Inquiry. And if you slide all if you slide all the way down, one of the things you'll see is this place with more SWI videos. And here is the Rain video I referred to. And as I mentioned before, you'll see how um, the kids are supplying words they think might be related to the base R-A-I-N. Um, we talked about this Rainer word. You can see how the student comes up with a very reasonable definition for that term. But you'll also notice how Carly brings in phonological uh, lessons. So with the, with the word rains with an S at the end, she highlights how it's pronounced Z. And it's just a little thing, but it's it's the kind of thing that just happens naturally when you work with word families. You also get into these graphing phonic correspondences. So I highly recommend you watch kids engaging in this kind of work. It's just a treat. Now, something else I wanted to re-point uh, you to is Lynn Anderson's Beyond the Word blog. And this particular recent one, and there's more, where she shows how that word bag activity works that uh, Carolee's used so much. If you go here, you can see her web page and the title, uh, Cycles of Life. That's the uh, blog post that actually she did with Anne Whiting, another brilliant person in Structured Word Inquiry. And I highly recommend all of their work. Um, but you, I, the idea of after seeing what Carolee's been doing with word families, with word bags, word webs, this would be a really rich place to go. So thanks for listening and uh, start searching for your own discoveries.